welcome back to my channel. I am the Woodland Witch. If you are new here, welcome. If you've been here, it is good to be back. As you all know, the last time you saw me, I was about nine months pregnant. I have since given birth to my little witchling and we are both doing great. It feels really good to be back. I missed creating content for you all and I am finally feeling well enough to get back to it. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about seven underrated plants, herbs, and flowers in witchcraft. I think we tend to hear about the same herbs all the time. They're considered trendy herbs, such as lavender, chamomile, rose, and I think there are a lot of other plants, herbs, and flowers that are a little underrated. Some of these plants do just as good of a job, if not a better job, at some of the magical properties we look into every day, such as love, healing, protection, purification. So without further ado, let's get into it. So today I will be talking about some of the medicinal uses of these herbs, mainly because they correlate to some of the magical uses. If you plan on using any of these herbs for a medicinal purpose, I suggest that you do your own research. It is not a one-size-fits-all system, so it, herbs, herbal remedies, they do affect people differently, especially if you have underlying conditions, are pregnant, or are looking to become pregnant. And along with your research, I suggest consulting a medical professional or your primary care doctor just to get a little more insight. So the first plant we are going to talk about is vervain. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, it is a sacred herb to the Morrigan, which I work with in my practice. And it has quite a few awesome qualities. So medicinally, it is known for kidney function. It is a diuretic. It is also an astringent, so it does constrict body tissue and help promote healing. It can help relieve headaches. It's good for inducing sleep and reducing insomnia. Vervain was a very common plant for a lot of different cultures, Romans, Greeks, Egyptians, all the way to the Celtic Druids. It was primarily used to purify a sacred space, and with it being considered a diuretic, which means it expels and cleanses the urinary system, the kidneys, it just completely flushes things out, bacteria, nastiness that we don't want. That's what makes it really good for purifying a space, purifying energy, just dispelling of any negativity and protecting against that negativity. Vervain is also an aphrodisiac, so it makes it really good for love magic. And because it does help with sleep, it is a great ingredient to use in something like a sleep sachet. Overall, just one of my favorite herbs. Okay, the next plant we are talking about is actually a flower and it is tiger lilies. Tiger lilies have anti-inflammatory properties. It is good for cardiac pain, chest pain. And for those reasons, it makes it really good for self-love, for healing a broken heart, bringing forth spiritual healing, uh, promoting spiritual alignment. They are very bright colored and abundant, so it's really good for abundance and bringing forth joy and happiness. I think my primary use for tiger lilies is to use them when I'm doing self-love magic or any kind of healing magic. Um, it is very good for deflecting negative thoughts and negativity just mentally and spiritually. Any kind of emotional release that you're looking for, if you're you know, trying to move on from a situation or heal from a situation, it's really great for stuff like that. The next herb on the list is whorehound. Whorehound is definitely uncommon. It's not used very often. It's something that I came across in my herbalism studies, and it's honestly become one of my favorite kind of banishing and protective herbs. Medicinally, whorehound is an expectorant, which means it pulls things out of the respiratory system. It helps you uh, break up mucus, thin it out, kind of dispel it, which makes it a perfect shield for negative energy. It helps pull that negativity out, helps dispel of that energy from you or space. And that shield can create sort of a protective barrier as well. Any kind of negative energy that may try to penetrate your spirit, your body, your space. So if you're overall just trying to cleanse something entirely, whorehound is your go-to. Another protective herb I really like is blessed thistle. Another pretty uncommon herb. Medicinally, it's really good for antibacterial properties, uh, stomach issues, indigestion, loss of appetite. My top use for blessed thistle is probably uncrossing. If you are caught in a bind, if you are caught in a situation where you are harboring negativity that you just feel you cannot get away from, it is really, really great for that. It can help purify psychic and spiritual blockages. Blessed thistle is also known for helping aid in bringing down a fever. For this reason, it makes it really great if you are trying to release anger, cool down a little bit, bring yourself back to um, an emotional balance. It can help with rationality and just kind of balancing yourself back out a little bit. Okay, I know I said vervain was my favorite, but the next one is also one of my top five favorites, and that is goldenrod. This is a very folkloric 
flower. It is one of my all-time favorites. It grows in my backyard. I harvest it every single year. It tends to grow in late summer, early autumn. It is also a diuretic, great for expelling anything, getting rid of something. It can help reduce pain and swelling, helps with a variety of skin conditions like eczema. It is also ruled by the planet Venus, which makes it great to use in love magic. The bright color of goldenrod and the abundance of it was said to bring forth good luck and good fortune. During autumn, it is one of my most used, I would say, plants because it is so abundant and has so many properties. It's something that I can utilize in pretty much every ritual during the fall time. Goldenrod is also great for aiding in divination. If you are doing any kind of spiritual connection, divination work, it can help enhance that connection. Some of the lore behind goldenrod in divination is that the stems were used as dowsing rods. It would help enhance divination practices and connection with spirits, and it was even said that the rods would point you into the direction of treasure, which also ties back into the luck aspect of the flower. All right, our next one is going to be rose hips. Rose hips are high in vitamin C. They help boost immune health, which makes it really great for strength magic. It can also help lower blood pressure, which makes it great for any kind of anti-anxiety spell or anti-stress, any release rituals, release of negative emotion. It can be placed in a sachet to help aid with nightmares and any kind of negative thoughts that you're having while you're sleeping. And the rose aspect of it ties into beauty, love, confidence. Rose hips can also be used in protection magic. Medicinally, it helps protect your tissues and your cell development, it protects your joints, in your connective tissues so it makes it really great to also use in protective magic especially in regards to yourself your body your health rose hips are very appealing as well they are very bright and red in color which makes them also really great for bringing forth attraction and bringing anything in especially love and confidence okay last on the list this is probably my most used um, I would say I use it more medicinally than magically, but the next one is going to be lemon balm. It grows very abundantly and in pretty easy conditions, so it was utilized by a lot of different cultures, and it was actually referred to as the elixir of life. Lemon balm is really good for love and happiness. Medicinally, it can help promote sleep. It's a very known calming herb. It's very good for assisting with insomnia and difficulty sleeping. One of my favorite ways to use lemon balm is in tea magic to just to bring forth comfort and peace. I like to use it in simmer pots to promote a happy home. And because it does grow so abundantly, it makes it also really great for success, bringing forth any kind of um, opportunity or positive endeavor. And it being known as the elixir of life makes it really great for strength and renewal. All right, everyone, there you have it. Those are my top seven underrated herbs in witchcraft. I have quite a list, so there will probably be a part two to this video. And as I advance in my herbalism practice, I will definitely be sharing more and more of these videos with you. Thanks for being here. I missed you all, and I will see you guys in the next one.